This will be the last part of a series we have done. This will be part 12 of a series that we're doing called Christian Transition. And uh, this last subtitle of part 12 is titled, Having a Ready and a Renewed Mind. Everything functions in the Christian experience through the mind. Everything. I know that we are a soul and that we have a spirit, but I also know that uh, the mind is a part of the heart. The mind plays a key, as a key role in your living. Uh, if your mind is not right, you'll never be right. Uh, if, you, if you can't think right, you'll never be right. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, Proverbs 23, 7. And I'm going to just share some things with you tonight, and we'll dig around in the Scripture. And uh, I'll never get out everything that I have here. Uh, but if you'd like to have my notes, you can email me at curtishutchinson at att.net and ask for the notes on the entire series, and I will email them to you. I do that to people who ask for them all the time. So... There's so much more in this series than I ever was able to bring out or will be tonight. Uh, but it's all in the notes and it will be a huge blessing for you to take and to study on your own and, and just allow the Lord to teach you uh, using these notes. But transition and transformation, when it's of the Lord, will always be gospel-centered. If, if, if the gospel is not progressing, and what I mean by that, if our knowledge of God's word in the context of the gospel is not increasing, neither are we. We might say we are, we might think we are, and we can be deceived. We've been deceived before. Uh, there are people out there tonight who think that God's honoring their giving tithes and offerings and have been given 60 years to denominations that preach you're not going to heaven unless you're water baptized. Can I tell you tonight, God has never honored any of the giving to that. Not one tithe, not one offering has he honored because that's giving uh, to someone who's preaching law preaching, trying to say you have to do something to get in heaven. So that's just a, a small example there of one of thousands that could be given tonight uh, that you can be deceived. We have been deceived. And so if we're being transformed, it's going to be by the renewing of our minds. Let's read that tonight in Romans 12 before I, I, I go any further. Romans chapter 12, we'll start in verse 1. And Paul writes this to the Roman church and to you and me. Everybody say, it's for, me. it's for me. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, we've covered that in the previous session, so I encourage you to go back and listen to them. You can find them all on the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316, or the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. They're all there right now. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. That's one option. You're about to hear two options tonight. You're involved in one of them. Every human being is involved in one of these processes. There's not a third. These are the two. And be not conformed to this world. Lost people are the world. They are the world. Lost people are the world. We are not the world. We're just in the world. As children, we're not of the world. We're in the world. Those that are of the world are the world. They're the lost people. That's the world. The worldly system is the lost world. And the Bible here tells us because we have a choice. They don't have a choice. The only choice they've got is to get saved. Saved folk have a choice and we make it every day if we know the choice is there to be made. Most Christians don't even know the choice is there. Most Christians are still trying to say no to sin. We, that's not the life of a Christian. Saying no to sin, sin's been dealt with. Sin's been overcome by Christ at Calvary. Sin, the sin nature, and all of it has been defeated. You and I, our choice is that we just keep trusting in Christ and what he did at Calvary. When you learn that, you'll quit watching them other preachers on TV. I said, when you wake up and you get that one day, you'll stop watching all that other garbage out there 
But you'll keep watching it as long as you ain't got that like you need it yet. And I know there's people who say, well, I just don't agree with you, preacher. There's nothing wrong with watching these other people. Are they opening that Bible and pointing you to Christ, what he did at Calvary? Well, you don't have to do that every time. Yes, you do. Paul did. Amen. And people who disagree with that are the people who still have the problems, still just can't get out of that rut, still just can't break out is because they haven't just made up their mind to be determined to know nothing else. And, and, and the reason that's going on is because they're still trusting in some flesh to some degree. Amen, Brother Curtis. Amen or oh me, help me, Lord. And be not conformed to this world, but, there's that colon, watch what's on the other side of it, is the contra what's contrary, the opposite, the other alternative, and it is the only other alternative, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Without the mind being transformed, we can't prove God's will. If the mind's not being transformed, if it's not being renewed, then we can't prove. That means we're not living according to God's will for our lives. It takes, it takes transformation that comes about through a mind being renewed. Everybody got that? One's faith, without one's faith being in the gospel, and I mean the object of one's faith presently, not 30 years ago, not three weeks ago, that's what you're trusting in now. What God did in Christ at Calvary, not just to save you, to get you to heaven, but to give you the grace you need today. It only comes through that avenue. And without one's faith being in that avenue... And nothing other, there will be no experience of God's grace. Now, a lot of preachers disagree with that. They think that God still gives grace even when your faith is not in the cross, and that's an absolute unbiblical lie. It's an absolute unbiblical lie. Folk need to, you know what folk need to do in the church? They need to read Galatians all year in 2020. When you get through reading Galatians, turn around and read it again. When you get through reading it, turn around and read it again. You'll see in the book of Galatians the Holy Spirit, not Paul, the Holy Spirit rebuking the church of Galatia because they fell from grace because they begin to trust in something other than the work of Christ at Calvary. That means they fell from grace. God didn't remove himself from the church and he won't do that. But here's the problem and here's what we don't know. We can remove ourselves from him and when we remove ourselves from him, Galatians 1, 6, then we Galatians 5, 1 through 4 fall from grace because our faith is not in the cross, Galatians 3, verses 1 through 3. We need to read Galatians. When we're done, we need to read Galatians again. And when we're done, we need to read it again, because it's the church today, fallen from grace, removed from him, going around quoting all their life that he'll never leave me and never forsake me, but I've left him. See, the devil don't mind you quoting scripture that's truth, but he'll never leave you, but he can't do you any good if you've removed yourself from him. You understand? The offer of grace is not the same as our receptance of grace. God's grace is offered to all who will believe the gospel. It's already on display. Christ died for all men. Hebrews 2, 9, he tasted death for all men. God, God's grace is offered to all humanity. Without it, nobody can be saved. We're saved by grace. And the example of that, if you're taking notes, is Gala up back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. Peter does a big piece of stupid, plays the big role of a hypocrite, and does what he does. Paul tells about it when he's writing the Galatian church in chapter 2. And Paul has to stand up, and he says face to face he had to rebuke Peter. And he said Peter was the blame. He, that's what it says in Galatians 2. Peter was to blame. Because Paul, he says, when I noticed they weren't walking according to the truth of the gospel, he had to stand up and rebuke Peter. Now listen, when Peter stood up and rebuked, when Paul rebuked Peter, it was God offering Peter grace. But to get it, 
is, a, the, is not the same thing. God offers you grace, but will you take it? So what Peter had to do was come, he had to repent and accept what Paul told him because the, in Galatians chapter 2, 90% of it is Paul preaching to Peter right in front of everybody that was there. We covered this months and months and months ago. And it's very interesting, but Peter repented. He received the grace of God to be able to keep going. Amen? So uh, I want to I read this again, verse 2, Romans 12. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation comes by the renewing of your mind. Prayer is you crying out to God, prayer is you in communion with God, but that ain't the renewal of the mind. For your mind to be renewed, you got to keep it where it was made new. You get that? Your mind was made new when you were made new. Behold, all things have passed away. Now behold, all things are new. Even your mind is new because, you're, because your mind is a part of your heart. You think with your mind, but the Bible calls what you think with your heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, and it ain't talking about this thing. It's talking about the heart of who you are. So, you know, you don't think with your ticker. It's pumping blood. It ain't thinking about a thing. It's just pumping. But the heart of man is his soul and spirit, and that's where he thinks. With the heart, man thinks. And, and as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's Proverbs 23, 7. And God has promised us that if we commit our works unto him, he will establish our thinking. That's Proverbs 16.3. Let's put that on the board tonight, if we will, Brother Nick. Proverbs 16.3. Uh, Jerry, you can, you can, when he gets that up there, uh, when we put stuff on the TV, if you don't mind, you can put the camera up there just for uh, a few seconds, but don't just let it hang up there just so everybody watching can see that if it's a good picture and it's not a glare, uh, just so they're not left out. And the, you know, uh, the, the Bible says here, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Okay, are you good with that? Have you got that? You, these scriptures I'm giving you tonight, you, you need to have these in your heart. You need to have these uh, where you can see them. You, you need to meditate in the word of God. You need to think about these things. You need to have more than I heard Brother Curtis. You, you need to be hearing the Lord giving these things to you in your heart. So God has promised that he will establish our thoughts if we commit our works unto him. And Jesus told us, taught us what our works are. When they piled up around him in John uh, chapter, uh, 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 I can't think of it, John 5 and 20, no, John 6 and 28 and 29, which one is it? John 6, 28, I think it's right, and 29, when they ask him, what must we do to do the works of God? He said, believe on the one God sent. Do you see do you see your works are to believe upon the one God sent? Your work is to believe on Jesus. If you'll do that, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. But you have to believe upon Jesus. Let me see. John 6, 28 and 29. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that you believe on him who he sent. Now you know what the naysayers say about us here at Crossway Church and everybody who's preaching this true gospel message. They say that we teach you don't have to do anything. Just believe on the Lord. No, that's what Jesus taught. Oh, there are many works. The Bible tells us that in Ephesians 2.10. There, there work, but they're all in Christ. That means because we're believing upon Christ, 
and what he did at Calvary. Don't leave that part out or you ain't believing on Christ. You have to believe in Christ and him crucified for your faith to be legitimate. And everybody who mocks and scoffs at that won't make it. They won't make it. They'll be like Cain. Everybody all right tonight? <laughs> God wants to establish your thinking. Why does he want to establish your thinking? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I can't establish my thinking, but I can believe upon Jesus. And God can see my works. What's my work again? To believe upon Jesus. And as I'm believing upon Jesus and what he provided for me at Calvary, which is everything, then God begins to establish my thinking. And Hebrews 13, 9 says that our hearts, the place we think, our hearts are established with grace. Our hearts, not this thing pumping the blood, who you are. You're established by grace. And grace only flows. Grace is not mystical and magical floating around. I got a little bit of grace here. No, grace is God doing something in your life. God, grace is God establishing your thoughts. Grace is God maturing you, changing you, leading you. And God's grace is what God's doing in your life. So the heart is established by grace. That means God has got to establish my heart. And this verse right here tells us, if I'll commit my works unto the Lord, if I'll believe upon what Jesus told me my works are, to believe upon him, he's the one God sent, then I'm doing the works of God. That's pretty, that's pre-K, isn't it? But it's not pre-K for somebody that's walking in the wisdom of this world. Oh, no, we've got to do stuff. Oh, you're going to do plenty of stuff. If you're in Christ, abiding in Christ, the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. He's going to work through you. He's going to take you places and do things through you if your faith is in Christ. If it's not in Christ and what he did at Calvary, then that's not the Lord. It's just you. And that's, that's where the rub comes in. Amen? So uh, I want to back up here and I want to read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 tonight because I want to mention uh, the ready mind before we move in. Uh, hopefully this will take us into some more uh, of the avenue, the vein in which the Lord given me these, th this message. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, the Bible says, Feed the flock. How many of you know that's all of our mission, not just mine as a pastor? Your mission is to feed the flock. Your mission, the church don't even want to hear that. That's the preacher's job. <laughs> now, as a Christian, I'm called to feed the flock. Amen. Amen. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, not willingly, not for filthy lucre, but that'll eliminate most ministers right there. Right there. But of a ready mind. See, we're talking about the mind tonight, the renewal of the mind. The mind is key in your living for Christ. Your mind, you, listen, you can't be transformed without the renewal of your mind. You can pretend. You can have a form of godliness, but you can't be transformed without the renewal of the mind. This is not one of a few options God's got. This is the option. You're either being conformed to this world or you're being transformed into the very image of Christ through your mind being renewed, and that's the result of you offering yourself, presenting yourself as a sacrifice holy unto God, one who's raised from the dead. Amen. I wish I was uh, going to have enough time to get deeper into this, but I'll tell you where you can hear the rest of this. I'll be ministering Saturday night and Sunday morning in a, in a town of 104,000 people. You might have heard of it before, Wichita Falls, Texas. 
And I'll be finishing this. I'll be preaching the rest of this there. It won't be a part of this series on CD in a, in a nice little case like this. That, uh, but, but it will be, you want to hear the rest of it. I promise you, you want to hear the rest of this because we're going to be talking about the weapons of righteousness and the weapons of unrighteousness and the choice you have in which ones, if you have the knowledge, you can choose. If you don't have the knowledge, the choice is already made for you. You won't know what to do and you'll be defeated. That's why the message of the cross is so powerful. We got preachers running around saying we don't need to preach the cross all the time. I'm going to tell you something, folks. In the days ahead, there's going to be some major disturbances among preachers who have preached the message of the cross. There's going to be some major turbulence in the days ahead because there's people already backing up from this message. There's people already backing up, already changing their mind about who we need to let preach in our pulpit. There's, all, there's people already backing up. Do not back away from your determination to know nothing else. Don't back away from it. I don't care who backs away. Don't back away with them. Keep running this race. Keep your eyes single on Christ and what he did at Calvary. I don't care who it is. I've told you for years, if I start backing up, then you better find somebody else. Stay home and find somebody on the tube. Find somebody on the internet. Find somebody that's opening the Bible and, and teaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because if you're not Hearing that, you will never grow even though they'll tell you you can. We don't live by feelings and emotions. And every time they even hear that phrase, they'll say, but God gave us our feelings and emotions, but we don't live by them. And they'll even make up lines and sentences with men's wisdom as to why really they're not telling you but it's really what they'll tell you will make you think it's okay just keep going like you're going let me tell you something folks the focus is Christ and what he did at Calvary it's always been the focus of God and when we back away from it we're backing away from God Amen. I plan on preaching this and preaching the narrowness of this until I'm no longer breathing, whether that's tomorrow or 25, 40 years from now. I, I, I intend on preaching this message because this is what the Bible is about. Jesus ain't coming back with a vesture dipped in money. He's not coming back with a vesture dipped in this and that. He's coming back wearing so all can see a vesture dipped in blood. It was about the blood before he got here. It's about the blood after he's gone from here. And it'll be about the blood when he comes back here. It's always about the blood. Without the blood, we hadn't got anything but really an anointing of the evil one. That's all we've got. And that will seduce us quickly. So whoever they are, whenever they start backing away from and, and start allowing and telling you it's okay to listen to these other ministers out there who are not preaching it, you better guard your heart because you don't know your heart. The Bible tells us that. But God does, and he wants to establish your heart, and he does it with grace. Amen, Brother Curtis. So, but of a ready mind, Peter writes. Have a ready mind. And I've wrote down some things here uh, that I will mention tonight and give you some scripture. To the word ready, to have a ready mind. And again, this is so important because your mind is the avenue. Again, your mind is a part of your heart. For, ever, for whoever may be thinking, well, it's not really my mind, it's my heart. Your mind is your heart. You think with your mind, your mind is renewed, but the Bible says as a man thinketh, we say we think in our minds, but listen, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we are as we think. We live as we think. I've said, I've said it, I, I was saying this before I ever knew the, uh, the illumination of God's word concerning the power of the cross for every day, not just power over sin, but all grace to come to me, that I live the way I live because I think the way I think 
And I think the way I think because I believe the way I believe. Believing is at the root of all of it. What you believe determines what you're going to think. And as you think, you will carry your life out by what you think. Amen, Brother Curtis. I live like I live because I think like I think. Now, psychology is men trying to change the way I think by, change, by changing what I do. They don't even consider the believing part. But because we are souls who have a spirit, it, it, it all must start with what I believe. And what I believe determines what I'll think, and what I think determines how I'll live. Don't forget that. It is in that order. So the word ready, uh, to have a ready mind, means you've got a prepared mind. Your mind is prepared. But it can't be prepared unless God's preparing it. Who's establishing our hearts? He says, I'll establish your thinking if you'll commit your works unto me. God's the one who prepares our minds. Another word for ready is equipped. We're equipped. We're ready. I've been equipped. I'm a good soldier. I've got the full armor of God. I've got the word of God. I've, I've, man, I'm, I'm, I've got the helmet, the breastplate. I've got the, the gospel shoes of peace, the loin belt of truth. I've got the shield of faith. I've got the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Man, I'm ready. I'm a good soldier. I've got, I've got everything I need. I'm equipped. If my faith is in the gospel, then all that will work on my behalf. But another word for ready is armed. If you're ready, that means you're prepared. I got, you don't have any soldiers in the house. If you're ready, that means you're prepared. If you're ready, that means you're equipped. If you're ready, that means you're armed. You've got what you need. Okay? 1 Peter 4.1 says this. Back up a chapter there. From chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. What mind is that? The mind of Christ. That you know you're going to have to suffer in this world. They that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Isn't that what the Bible says? Remember I used to trick y'all about twice a year on that one for years. Anybody remember that? I'd say, now doesn't the Bible say they that live godly are going to suffer persecution? Y'all would all shout amen. I'd say, no, that ain't what it says. They that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And see, the in Christ Jesus means they that live for God through faith in the cross because that's what puts you in Christ and faith there alone is what allows you to abide, remain, continue in Christ. Amen. So to arm ourselves with the same mind is to, we have the mind of Christ. We've been given the mind of Christ. And that mind realizes that because we're not of this world, we're going to have to play, uh, uh, we're going to have to be involved. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, consciously involved. It's not just God's going to do what God's going to do anyway. No, I have. if that was the case, we wouldn't need anything written in the New Testament except the revelation of Jesus being the Son of God and he died for us. If you'll believe in him, you'll be saved. That's it. Zip it up. You got all that on one page. We don't need the rest of it. But that's not the case. You and I, the one main, now there's a lot of things that make us different from the world now, but the one of the things we all mention tonight is that now you have a choice. But you don't have to choose what's right. You can still go the way of the world. If you couldn't, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't need this. We wouldn't need to be being told don't be conformed to the world. 
Why? Because you can be. How many Christians do you know? Don't raise your hand, but how many of us, get that hand down, how many of us have been Christians, but we've been living out there just like the world, being conformed to the world? I'd say that the majority of the church today is being desensitized by the cute little shows on television that's got homosexuals and lesbians in them where it's becoming nothing even now to the church. No wonder they'll let them come preach in their church. They done got used to it on TV. And God, oh God forbid you say anything, it ain't God, but for, you know, the community forbid you say anything negative. Don't even bring up the word of God. Because now you're the bad guy. Tell you how weak Christianity is today. You can be hardcore against the, the things that are God calls an abomination to him, but when your kid comes up and gets attacked by this stuff and carried off into this stuff, I've watched Christians now change their whole views on things that are an abomination to God just because their kids fell prey to it. If God use your, if, if the devil can use your kid to get to you, he'll do it. I've watched parents now divorce because some kid, their child, got off and got carried away in that abomination lifestyle through the lust of their own flesh, carried off into it, and now one, the mom or the dad said, that, that, that ain't happening, that ain't happening, that ain't of God. We gonna love them, but they can't, they, we can't get, keep going like we've been going. No, no, that, uh -uh. I love them, but things ain't gonna be the same. And the other parent says, no, no, it, 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 we just keep going like we're going and we have to accept them. No, that's gonna be a problem in mine, your house. I can't tell you what I really think up here tonight. Y'all would run me out of town. But we, we, we and this woman right here, we're going to have problems when somebody tells me, oh, we, 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 I understand we got to keep loving folk, but things ain't going to be the same. Things are not going to be the same. I'm not going to accept what God calls an abomination. I don't care who it is. I'm talking about weak Christianity. I'm talking about Christians who've made the choice to be conformed to the world instead of being transformed against, transformed into Christ in his image, which is totally opposite of the world. Oh, they still talk in Jesus. They still talk in church. They still, oh, they still talk in the talk, but the walk ain't there. Because you can't be being conformed to the world and be being transformed by the renewing of your mind at the same time because the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind will make you stand against that which is worldly. While I'm accepting that which is sinful in the world, I'm making excuses, but maybe it's because of the culture we live in now. Well, everybody's drinking, it's okay. Well, everybody's doing this, it's okay. Listen, while I'm making excuses so my flesh can lust after and I can feel comfortable about it, I'm not being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I am being conformed to worldly thought. And I'm telling you, it's so big in the church. We've made excuses for everything. Folk, just stay home now because God's okay. I'm not under law. <laughs> what folk don't know is grace demands so much more than law. Grace demands so much more than law. You understand that's biblical, what I'm telling you? Grace demands of you so much more than law. To whom much is given, much is required. Oh, grace is so much more than law. See, one, one verse just cuts the lie down when people can hesitate. Well, I don't know about that. Grace demanding more out of me than law. No, law was tough. No, the penalty of the law was tough. 
But grace demands so much more out of God's people because it is so much more having been given us. We, we like to, to boast about a new covenant with better promises, hallelujah, but we, boy, we're not thinking about the requirements and the responsibilities are so much more also. Amen, Brother Curtis. And we're about to reach a place here in a minute where I'm going to have to have you say, I love Brother Curtis. Some of you looking at me tonight like, oh, I don't know about this now. You better find out about it. I'll tell you where you can find out about it. It's in this old book called the Bible right here. It's where you can find out about it. It's right here is where you can find out about it. This right here is where you need to have your nose stuck every day. You can't read it enough. You can't memorize enough of it. You can't declare it enough. Everything, listen, when the grass burns up and the heavens are folded up like a scroll and disappeared and vanished, the word of God will be lasting forever and forever. Hallelujah. You can't get enough of this. Amen. And if you're not learning this, then you're learning the world. If you're not learning the word, you're learning the world. They've got their own word. Hey, y'all all right tonight? Everybody say, I love, I love Brother Curtis. Brother Curtis. Ah, a couple of you cut out on that now. <clears throat> That's all right. We'll get you encouraged in a minute. Mm. The reasonable response to God's mercies the reason that this is this is Romans chapter twelve where we've read tonight. The reasonable God says this is God's word. This ain't just Paul writing something. We need to get away from that. Praise God for Paul. Hallelujah for Paul. But God gave Paul what he wrote. You leave that, you ain't gonna make it. The reasonable response to God's mercies is to be sacrifices who are being transformed by the renewal of the mind and are able to affirm. God's will. That's your reasonable service. That in God's eyes, that's, that's, that's our logical. In God's eyes, that's the only thing that makes sense for a Christian to be a part of. But we're, we're, so war we're surrounded by a warped world. We, you can't leave the house. You can't turn. Man, you can't even be watching a, a nice kitty program on TV that the commercial won't come on, and, you, and you'll think it's okay. Um, uh, they're trying to sell trucks until somebody almost naked walks out. Or they got to throw alcohol in. There's so many drugs, man. The TV, I tell Robin almost every night, look, there's a new drug right there. I can't say it, but it's a new drug. Every night there's a new drug they're talking about on TV. We guinea pigs. Try this one. <laughs> Tomorrow night, try that one. <laughs> Open up a magazine, you're going to find sin in it. Try to watch something on TV, you're going you to see sin. You're going to hear sin. It's worse now than it's ever been. I don't care what you read about old time and the evil. It's here today too. Now I got to read this again. This, this is it. The reasonable, in God's eyes, the logical way for a Christian to respond to his mercy is to be a sacrifice who's being transformed by the renewal of our minds and that's the only way that we can affirm God's will. See, God's looking for a few folk who will have a, have a show of bearing his fruit. What is the fruit? It ain't being nice to somebody. Mormons and Jehovah's Witness, thank God you need to be nice to everybody, but anybody can be nice and pleasant and hospitable, and that ain't what everybody's looking for to see if you're a Christian. They're looking to see, first of all, if you got the testimony of the blood of Jesus. Is that what your faith is in, Jesus and what he did at Calvary? And if it is, if you're saying that's what you're trusting in, then they're looking for some fruit in your life. They're looking for you to be different. Man, they used to think I was a nut when I worked out there where I used to work all in the years, and they, we'd be sitting around, they'd say, y'all see that on TV the other night? And I said, they asked me, do I watch it? And I ain't never seen that. You ain't never seen that show? And I ain't never seen that. You mean to tell me you ain't never watched the night of the living dead? 
or the living dead. I'm not. Man, I don't watch about death. I don't, I don't wear skulls on my shirt. You understand that's a symbol of death, a skull. I, I mean, I don't, they're, and, and it blows them away. Now, I'm not talking about somebody being perfect up here tonight. Not, I'm not, and you not either. But I'm talking about there is a noticeable difference between you and the world. Amen. Something that makes him go, oh, you're strange. Right. Let me tell you the bad news tonight is most of the church thinks you're strange. It's like that guy that was in church every week told me that day I was quoting the scripture trying to help somebody at work. I've told you this many times. He said, what, what are you doing? What Do you think this is Sunday school? I said, no, sir, this is Tuesday school. He didn't bother me no more about that, but that's his attitude. If we're not up there in that building having church on Sunday, don't be talking about that out here. This ain't the place for that. What do you mean it ain't the place for it? That's why the devil runs places, because we don't want God on this place. Well, you ain't got but two options. One of them, Satan, the other one's the Lord. I believe I'm going with the Lord. When the mind stops being renewed, the transformation ceases. Because the way we're transformed, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, is through the renewal of the mind. Now I'm going to ask you a convicting question tonight, and you need to just ask your own self this question. Are you learning the word of God, not just what it says, or is it, con is it conforming you into the image of Christ? Is it transforming the way you think, the way you act, the way you treat people, the way, listen, the way that you find yourself being obedient to God's word? Because that's the ultimate knowing God's will. There's only one thing more important than knowing God's will. Anybody know what it is and won't tell me tonight? No, there's, no, no, not doing. What's more important than knowing what God's will is? It's knowing him. A lot of people spend their whole life wanting to know what God's will is, but they won't even have to search that out if they would just set out on a mission to know him. Know him. Fall in love with Jesus. He's there for you to fall in love with. This ain't about no church thing. This is about you and Jesus. Do you talk to him? Are you listening to him? I ain't talking about going out and looking at the clouds. I'm talking about opening this book. That's where you're going to hear from God. You got all kind of nuts running around. We'll just go out and stare at the clouds. God will speak to me. Oh, that one looks like a poodle up there. Oh, God's telling me that, ah, oh, no, nah, you better run from them folk. If it ain't in the Bible, it ain't God. There it is. When the mind stops being renewed, the transformation ceases. The transformation is taking place. We're being changed, and this series is about transitioning. From where we are, we're just moving. Running the race, you're not going to stand at the start line and finish. You have to take another step. You have to run. You're not racing against people. You're simply racing to finish. That's all. We need to quit racing against people. We're not, we're not in competition. We're racing to finish the race. That's our goal is to finish the race. God doesn't stop the process ever. He never stops the process. It's always us. When we stop taking the wrong thoughts to the obedience of Christ, the process stops. You have thoughts you shouldn't have quite often. Let me say that again. Some folk in here said, no, not me. If you can hear my voice right now, you have wrong thoughts quite often. 
Now that doesn't mean that they're just this or that, but they're wrong. And the Bible, I'm going to close with this scripture tonight. This is where I'll begin this weekend down the road, down there about five hours away. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. This really has been a powerful scripture for us at Crossway Church. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Over the last couple of years, it has helped so many people, not just here, but through social media, people have been blessed. The Bible here says that, let's back up and read verse 4. Verse 4. You really need to read verse 4 before you flow into verse 5. Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means it can't be through nothing I do because that's flesh. You get that. But they're mighty through God all the way so powerful that they will pull down strongholds. Anybody ever had a stronghold? You know where it was taking place? In your mind. In your mind, that thought just kept coming. That thought just kept coming. It kept coming. And finally, you got angry, and you did something, and then you just got, you got more angry, and that thought just kept coming. You know, it's like I've said before, the kid don't wake up today and says, I'll just get a gun and blow everybody away. No, he's had a thought way back that birthed that thought. And then that thought led to that thought, and then it just grew. Every single action in your life began with a thought. Every action. Now that tells me just in that statement, which is a true statement, every act we make begins with a thought. Knowing that, that alone lets me know that Christianity is a radical pay attention type of religion. I hate to use that word. But it's, it's, it's a radical, it is a radical thing that, that, that we're, and, and we're going to read this, let's read verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And the obedience of Christ is his obedience unto death. That's where you're to take the thoughts that have exalted himself above the knowledge of God, those, those things that end up strongholds in your life. You just can't stop thinking about it. Even when you're trying to pray, my Lord, have, don't raise your hand, but have you ever been praying and sincere in your praying and right in the middle of your prayer? My gosh, those thoughts are there in your prayer. You're overwhelmed. You're overtaken. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We didn't float in here with a white robe on tonight. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You're trying to pray and those thoughts come in. God, why am I thinking about this? I'm standing here trying to praise you and worship you right here in the sanctuary. Where are these thoughts coming from? Right up here in me having church. They come. You didn't bring them. You didn't invite them. But you as a child of God have the power to do something about them. You didn't invite them. You didn't bring them. That, that's out of your control what comes in. I say it's, it's not all the way out of your control because a lot of it has to do with what you're feasting your ears and eyes on. That burst thoughts that come into our life. What are you watching? Who are you hanging out with? What are you partaking of? All those things allow because the more involved you are in the world, the more in, the more uh, the greater the avenue of all kind of thoughts to come into your mind. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't preaching to a bunch of uh, non-experiential people up in here. That's why you need to get in the Word. A lot of things you watch, you don't need to be watching. You don't need to be looking at because everything you watch goes in. Everything you watch, everything you're a part of goes in. It's like a warehouse. Dreams, you say, my Lord, why did I dream that? Because something you saw, something you heard, something you tasted, something you smell, something. It's something that come in. Back to the main point, about out of time tonight, but you, you don't control what thoughts come into your head 
ultimately. Now, again, don't forget that the way you live your life is, go, is, is going to determine a lot of what comes into your head. I mean, if you're living a life out there that's uh, things that are not godly, man, you, you, yeah, you, you're going to have thoughts that the other person over here is not going to have because you'll live in some area he ain't living. But as a child of God who's fighting the good fight of faith and learning how to live in, I said learning, we're all learning how to live in victory. How to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. These, these scriptures right here, and I'll bear down into this in Wichita Falls this weekend, but this one scripture, this one verse in verse 5 of 2 Corinthians 10 tells us that through the power of God, we can cast down imaginations Imagination is an image. First part of imagination, image, imagine. Image placed in your head. You ever seen that thing? You can, it's a picture somebody painted, and they tell you to stare at it for 30 seconds and then look up at the ceiling, and my Lord, there's something real up there. You ever done that? You ever seen that? Y'all ever done that? Maybe I need to try to find one, bring it to church, be a great little project. You stare at that. And it's some little outline of something. You can tell it's kind of a man's head. We've seen it before. You can, tell, you can tell it's a man's head, but it's all lines and dots and stuff. You stare at that for 30 seconds, and then you look up at a white ceiling like this one, and there is this gorgeous picture of this man. I'm telling you, your mind is a powerful, powerful thing. Your mind. The devil uses it. Because every action begins with a thought. Every word begins with a thought. You might say, no, I spoke before I thought. No, there was a thought before the word or there couldn't have been a word. Amen. If you don't think before you speak, it'll just be bloop. <laughs> and it, that even took a thought for me to do that. So let's finish with this verse 5. Casting down imaginations. Now, what are we talking about as we close this series out tonight? We're talking about transitioning. We're talking about movement, growth, maturity, being conformed into the image of Christ, which is what? How? By being conformed, made conformable unto the image of his death, the Bible says. Not resurrection, death. We're being made conformable unto the death of Christ. So the way we cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that means every thought I have that's contrary to the word of God, when the devil and my flesh team up and tell me I don't need to be in church, I can stay home. Now listen, that is something that has exalted itself above the word of God. And I'm to cast that down. How do I cast it down? I bring those thoughts that are exalting themselves against the knowledge of God into captivity. Where are they taken captive, though? At the cross. I bring into captivity every thought to where they were captured 2,000 years ago. Jesus died and defeated every principality and power, every vain imagination, every thought that... Uh, rises itself above the knowledge of God, he took care of all that at Calvary. And if you will fight to keep your faith, and it is a constant fight. This thing ain't no day off and two days on or two days off. Oh, this is, you're breathing, you're thinking. You're thinking at night when you're sleeping. Now, you ain't got control over that. So you better be praying before you go to bed. Lord, help my mind to be stayed on you even while I'm sleeping tonight. Give me dreams. You promise, Lord, you're going to give me dreams. I'm old man in the last day. <laughs> you're going to give me visions and dreams in these last days. Lord, keep my mind tonight. If I have a dream, let it be that which you give me. Bringing every, bringing into captivity 
every thought to the obedience of Christ. That, th this proves right here, I can't just start thinking about a big juicy red tomato when I'm instead of thinking about that sinful thing over there. No, 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 that ain't going to work. I can't take that sinful thought, that thought that's exalting itself above the knowledge of God. I can't take it to a, a, a focus on a juicy red tomato. Just think about a big red tomato. Oh, that big red tomato. Oh, that, oh I can think about my kids. Oh, oh, my precious little kid. Look at him. Oh, my, no, no, no. That ain't where God told you to take your thoughts. If you try to take it, and you do try, you, the whole church is trying to take the thoughts that they know they shouldn't be having. They try to take them somewhere else and their thoughts capture them and tie them up in places they didn't know and can't tell you how they got there. But I can tell them how they got there. It all began with the thought that they didn't take captive, so it took them captive. One of the two is going to be captive. You're going to be captured by your thoughts and carried off by the lust of your flesh or you're going to capture the thoughts and take them to the place where Christ died to destroy thoughts like that, like we have. Amen? Amen. It's been better than I thought it was going to be. And this weekend in Wichita Falls, it's going to get even better. So uh, pay attention to the Pastor Curtis Facebook page. and We'll get a little bit more deeper into this this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. This has been a great series. This has been a much-needed series. Whenever you find a ministry that is focused on the cross, that only points to Calvary, the Word of God is going to have great illumination. The Word of God is going to have a great illumination because it, this is the context. There is no other context. There is no other context for God's Word to be preached in there's no other way that we can learn Christ. And it is Christ that we're learning, the way of Christ. Amen. Stand with me tonight, if you will. Praise God. Thank you for coming out on this dark Wednesday night. I want to tell you something, folks. Crossway Church and other ministries such as this that refuse to know anything else, God has a great purpose upon ministries such as this. It's not the big thousand-membered churches. It's the little groups of people that God has been able to bring back to a place where they can be taught, taught the Word of God, taught about Jesus and what he did at Calvary. To be, listen, here's one of the definitions of having a ready mind, equipped, to be equipped for the work of the ministry. And that's really what this ministry is about. And there will never be people in Crossway Church that do not want to be equipped for the work of the ministry. They might come and sit in. They might come and hang out for a little while, but they're not going to stick around because really if they don't have any intention on being equipped for the work of the ministry, really to be a, a, a Christian living the experience because that is to be equipped, then they're not going to hang out very long. But this group of people here, we're not higher up, we're not elite above, we're not better than one single person. But we are called to stand in the gap. We are called to stand in this grace and to proclaim God's word as it is written without changing it. We are called to believe God for this entire region in which we've been given. Your prayers are not in vain because you're in the faith. Your prayers, let me say it again, your prayers are not in vain because you're in the faith. Don't dare let the devil tell you your prayers don't matter just because you've got thoughts that you ain't supposed to have. Listen, you're in the faith. In the faith is the only place you can deal with those thoughts that come in. In the faith is the only place you can be being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every Christian that stops being renewed, stops being transformed rather by the renewing of their mind, the process ends right there. Now when they decide to come back to faith in Christ and what he did at Calvary alone and allow the Holy Spirit to guide them into truth, the process can start any time, start over, but we stop it many times just like Israel did. They're a type of us today. We stop the process, but God never does. We do. Tonight, he's willing to say, you know what? I see you've stopped the process, 
But all you've got to do is just like Peter, all you got to do is repent and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've stopped the process, and Lord, I'm coming back tonight. I'm coming back to the way of the cross. I'm coming back to the truth. I'm coming back to you. And I want to live for you. I want to be a witness unto you. I want to be a testimony to all that know me. Lord, I want to be renewed in my mind because there's the place you're going to establish me. There's where I'm going to be established. Lord, help me. Help my faith. Oh, Lord, help my unbelief. Help me to trust in the work of Christ at Calvary for that is my work alone. Hallelujah. How many would in this place tonight say, I want to be changed. As this year ends and the next year comes, I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind like never before. I want to see the increase of God in my life. I want to see more fruit of the Spirit and less fruit of my flesh. I want to be equipped more for the work of the ministry. I want to be equipped in the truth of God that I might learn how to capture every thought that's not a godly thought and take it to Calvary where it was put to death so that it won't put me to death. That's us in this place, Lord, and we give you the praise for the Word of God tonight. The Spirit of God, we thank you for giving us ears to hear the truth and I pray that we would step into a place that's even a better place of hearing where we see more clearly, we hear more clearly. We have a greater confidence, a greater boldness as we transition from where we are in faith to faith again. From faith to faith, from grace to grace, from glorifying Christ to glorify Christ. We ask it all in Jesus' name tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you need prayer, we'll pray with you tonight. Whatever you might have need of, God.